apparently a lot of you are watching this. Thank you. It actually makes me feel really good that there's people out there that are interested in what I say. One thing someone mentioned is that my last show sounded kind of scripted. Well, it actually isn't. I'm totally talking out of my ass. <laughs> um, actually, in, in reviewing the show, because I did so much editing, I found that I wish I had scripted it a little more because I could have put more content in the show. I talked about dynamical systems a lot, but I didn't really go into a lot of details. Going over all of the content I do have on dynamical systems, again, thinking I'm going to put more details into the show, I realize that's just simply impossible and it would just bore the hell out of everyone. A friend of mine recently introduced me to a nice little video on 10-dimensional string theory. You, you start off with a point and you separate the point, and you make a line, you duplicate the line, you get two dim two-dimensional object, square, right? Duplicate that again, you get a three-dimensional object. If you duplicate that again, you can get a four-dimensional object. You can also view it as time slices. It asks you to imagine those four dimensions as a point, duplicate that point, and so on and so forth, up uh, another three levels. Then he starts talking about curving space-time by folding it through these other dimensions. Think of a two-dimensional person, like an ant. This ant is walking on a piece of paper. To get from one side of the paper to the other, the shortest route is a straight line. Unless you go into the third dimension and you bend the piece of paper through the third dimension. Something like this. Once the paper is bent in the third dimension, the ant can easily disappear from one side and reappear on the other. Obviously as soon as the paper is unbent again. This leads me into Gravitomagnetism. Gravitomagnetism has nothing to do with magnetic fields as we think of them. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, a rotating mass, such as a planet, should twist the fabric of space-time, and any object near it that gets caught up in this twist will get pulled off of its normal course. A group of NASA scientists and scientists from the European Space Agency have been trying to measure this twist in space-time. They've created a set of gyroscopes. These gyroscopes consist of perfectly spherical quartz crystals, spherical down to the molecule. These crystals are so spherical, in fact, that if you blew them up to the size of the planet, the tallest mountain would be no higher than 18 meters. The problem that this posed to them is how do you measure something that's perfectly spherical? So they came up with the idea of coating the spheres in a substance called niobium. When niobium is cooled, it becomes a superconductor. It gains electromagnetic properties when spun. So you can now measure the electromagnetic field around it and use it as a gyroscope. These gyroscopes are a million times more accurate than anything we have today. Basically, the spinning superconductor created a gravitomagnetic field of its own that was trillions of times more powerful than predicted by relativity or quantum theory. They tested this without the niobium being a superconductor, i.e. raising the temperature. And their instruments detected no gravitomagnetic field. Once again, dropping the temperature, the gravitomagnetic field appeared. They have tried and retried this experiment over 250 times over the span of a year before they reported it. As expected, the scientific community has immediately rejected these findings based on the fact that we would have to rewrite quantum theory and relativity to somehow make them fit these experimental results. Personally, I don't see any problem rewriting quantum theory as we've already rewritten it three times anyways. Now how does gravitomagnetism relate to the ant that we had in the two-dimensional world? If you can create a strong enough gravitomagnetic field, 
you can bend space-time enough to affect other objects. Now, the only way we've known about doing this to date has been with mass. For example, a planet. If these spinning superconductors can create a gravitomagnetic field that is trillions of times stronger than either quantum theory or relativity has predicted that they would, then the applications are endless. Imagine creating a gravitomagnetic vortex in front of your spaceship, simply pulling your ship forward without any inertia effects on its passengers. For example, if you were to accelerate at 50 G's, that's 50 times the acceleration due to gravity, you would kill all of your passengers. If you accelerate at 50 G's, accelerating all of your passengers at the same speed on all of their molecules like gravity does, by bending space-time around them, then they will likely live. Other applications include folding space-time like we did with the piece of paper, popping into another part of the universe, not necessarily traveling faster than the speed of light, but bending space-time, traveling the entire distance is no longer necessary. I'm gonna leave it there for today because my brain's starting to hurt. See you later.